So, so far we've already talked about shifting, where we take a binary number and we simply shift it either to the left or to the right, so taking whatever bit is in one position and shifting it over one position. And whatever is left, we just kind of drop off, and whatever is needing to be filled in, we fill in with either a 0 or a 1, depending on the kind of shift operation that we're doing. But one concept that I think is important to cover, it's a natural progression from binary shifting, is binary rotation. And now what is binary rotation and why does it relate to binary shifting? Well, let's let's take a look at that. Now binary rotating is very similar to binary shifting. In fact, the beginning of the process is pretty much identical. If we wanted to take a binary number and we wanted to rotate it to the left by one position, well, the process is very similar to shifting to the left. So we would take the uh, bit in the rightmost position, we'd shift it over one position, and then do the same with all subsequent bits. Uh, but now in a shift operation we would take this last bit and we would discard it and we would take the new bit that was created we would fill that with either a one or a zero depending on whether or not it was a logical or arithmetic shift but in a rotate we instead take that discarded bit and we put it in the new position now if you wanted to perform multiple rotations in one fell swoop you can certainly do that uh, by performing a single rotation like I just showed you multiple times, say if you wanted to uh, rotate to the left three times, uh, you could just perform that operation three times over. Or what you can also do is you can just take uh, the number of bits on the end corresponding to the number of shifts that you want to perform. So if we wanted to shift left three times, we could take the left three bits and we can just move them to the opposite side. And this new number is exactly the same as if we were to have performed the single uh, rotate left three times. But as far as the application of rotate itself, you may be thinking, why don't I just use shift for everything? And the reason for that is because sometimes there are applications where you do want to shift a number around, but you want to shift it uh, so many times that it ends up kind of wrapping it on itself, and you want to preserve that number. So if you want to, say, scan through every single bit, uh, of a number without losing the information you can of course shift it over uh, to say a, a sense wire on this end right here uh, and as you perform those rotations and as you sense the state of each bit uh, those bits will then get put back into the beginning so by the time you shift through the entire number the number is effectively restored so looking at rotate right, uh, rotate right and rotate left are pretty much the, the same thing, uh, just in opposite directions. And the process is very similar too. You just take the number and shift it as you normally would, just like that, and then take the last bit, move it to the beginning as you normally would. However, the nice thing about rotation is a rotate right or a rotate left circuit uh, can perform both operations. You just need to know how to convert one to the other, depending on what kind of circuit you have. So say, for example, you have a circuit that can rotate to the right uh, any number D uh, by N bits. So if I put in uh, any number in the D and put, say, 1010110, and I put in a number, this is an 8-bit number, so we can put in any number 0 through 7, uh, and we put in, say, 5. Well, what that's going to do is it's going to take this number and rotate it by five positions to the right. So the output is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be 1, 0, 1. And then this is going to be put on the other side. I believe that's correct. Yeah, because this is going to be moving five positions over to the right. So this is the end result of taking this number and shifting it, or rotating, excuse me, five positions. However, you'll notice that this number is the same as this number if you rotate it to the left three positions. And we can do that here by taking this number right here, uh, these last three bits, moving them over here, which would create the number 00110. And then with these last three bits, 101. Both these numbers are identical. Uh, but you'll notice we got to this number by rotating to the right five positions and then rotating to the left three positions. And so the rule of thumb in, in our case here with a rotate right circuit is that a rotate right of n positions is always going to be equal to a rotate left of the width of d, which is this input here, minus n. So if we wanted to rotate right 
uh, five positions, that's going to be the same as rotating left the width of D, which in this case is eight bits, minus five, which five minus or eight minus five is three. And that's, of course, why we are able to get the same number rotating uh, right five positions or left three positions. And the same is true if I were to reverse these. If I were to instead make this uh, rotate left and rotate right, this would still work out to be the same. Uh, rotate left of n position is always going to be equal to a rotate right of the width of the input minus n. So the nice thing about this is you, if you wanted to create a rotate left or rotate right circuit, you don't have to create both. You can actually just create one and simulate the other simply by subtracting uh, the width of the bus uh, from the number of bits that you want to shift, or rather the other way around, the number of bits you want to shift from the width of your input bus. And doing something like that is very sim simple. All you need is a mux and a subtractor. It's, it's not that difficult to do. So that, as, uh, as a result, allows you to make two circuits out of one circuit. Uh, but the nice thing about this, too, is you can actually make four circuits out of one circuit. The reason why is you can actually get a shift operation from a rotate operation. And it doesn't matter if you're doing shift left, shift right, rotate left, or rotate right. As we've just discovered, uh, rotate left and rotate right are effectively the same thing, just kind of complementary. And you can get a shift left or a shift right from a rotate left or rotate right with relative ease. So if I take this number here and I decided to rotate it to the right two positions, um, or say I wanted to shift right to the uh, two positions. I could actually rotate right two positions. So take this number and rotate it to or shift two positions uh, like this and then take these last two bits and put them over here. Uh, so that would be a rotate right by two positions but then I can turn this into a shift simply by anding it with a mask generated from the number of positions I want it to rotate. And I think I'm missing a bit. Um, 11010, 11010 I am missing a bit, my mistake. Um, so if I uh, if I wanted to turn this rotate into a shift, all I'd have to do is generate this mask uh, and then add them together, and the end result is effectively the same as a shift right two positions. You'll notice that this number is effectively this number uh, shifted to the right. And so if I wanted to perform a arithmetic shift right, I could do that with this operation just as easily. Instead of anding it with one mask, instead we're going to or it with another. And the reason why is because when it comes to an arithmetic shift, uh, if the last bit is a one, we're going to want to fill those uh, those missing bits with ones. And that can be easily done just by oring it uh, with a mask like this. So if I take this number and I or it with this mask, the end result is going to be one 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 zero one zero. And I think I did that right. Nope, I'm forgetting that one again. My mistake. So, as a result, this number ends up being this number arithmetically rotated, or excuse me, arithmetically shifted to the right two positions.